It has returned, as I have feared. The sickness must not gain power. There is only one way to make sure this does not happen. It is up to them to push back against the coming storm. My children will fight. They will save us all. All right, uh, I didn't give myself some energy. Uh. All right, so do you have any questions before we start? Do you have any, like, uh, did you prepare anything? That, I don't know. <laughs> um, I just have, like, a few notes that I made today. I mean, okay. it, so I don't have anything, like, super prepared now. All right. This I'm sorry, this will be yeah. You're fine. This will be like super short since uh, I was expecting another person. So yeah. Anyway. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Reliable <laughs> as me. Wait. They're just not as reliable as me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Welcome back to the show. Uh, oh, I fucked that up already. <laughs> All right. Hi. Welcome back to the Gateway. Today, we're going to speculate and discuss the ever-present question in each of our lives. <gasps> Religion. Faith. Oh. God. Gods. Where, where, where does that leave everyone? Uh, do you believe in a higher being? Or don't you? Or whatever. Uh, so we're going to discuss that. So yeah, I fucked that up too. Whatever. I'm trying to like... Uh. Anyway, let me restart. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to The Gateway. Today we're going to speculate and discuss over a topic that, uh... I'm just going to skip that part. I can't even talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so stepping through The Gateway today is my special guest, Moose Nee, also known as Meow. That's oh. right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> welcome... <laughs> We might be on heroin. Uh, welcome back to the panel. Um, let's spill a little bit about uh, yourself, about um, your content and other projects you got going on for people who don't know you or who have bad memories. <laughs> um, so I go by Moosney on the Discord and the forums. I'm a community writer. I've put up a few stories on the forums that I've written. I've also done a few blurbs out of a Burning Wheel and Pathfinder campaign that I'm running in a loosely based Vera setting. Uh, we've been running it for a little over a year now, I think. So we kind of had to use our own creative intuition where we don't have the lore to fill the gaps. Awesome. And uh, you did recently do a... Uh, uh, you recently... <laughs> you recently <laughs> did a podcast with the Ashen Herald... Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like summarize it for us. And you also did a forum post too that I wanted to, that I want you to touch on as well before we start this segment. Because it's very interesting for people who are trying to come up with a backstory for their character. Uh sure. Um so I did the podcast with Daedalus, the Ashen Herald, as well as Typhurious. Yeah. Um and it was based around the concept of creating a character and it's not necessarily just a character for a role-playing game a tabletop role-playing game uh, which is where ty furious and i have a lot of uh, experience in but it was also kind of making just the framework of a character that you can play in an mmo like ashes of creation and how you can really enjoy a game a lot more in depth if you kind of just write the outline of your character instead of it just being something that you just happen to log into every day that you just slap gear on and that's it um, and we just went over a few little points about what we do to help make characters and that the general thing is have fun with it and just get started. I mean, no one's going to judge how long it takes you to make a character or uh, no one's going to judge what you make about your character. They might judge you. Just a little. Just a little. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to we're going to get a little serious for a moment. Not too serious. because <clears throat> um, Yeah. The subject is already taken too seriously, I think. Um, 
So we're just going to kind of uh, casually talk about religion in Ashes of Creation, what we know so far, um, some of our hopes and dreams for it, uh, and just speculating on this system. So for those of you guys who don't know, Ashes of Creation so far has been confirmed to have 10 deities and 6 religions, according to Stephen Sharif. Um, also, a little bit of backstory on the gods and their pantheon. Uh, so the beginning of the creation of the universe that exists within Ashes of Creation was a result of a group of god beings. There were 10 of them, and there was a celestial struggle in which these groups of gods were fractured. Uh, so there will be components of good and evil, and that is according to the man himself, Mr. Stephen Sharif. So, let's start this off. So, Moose, Meowth. Wait, I have you as Meowth. I just realized that. Either one's fine. Okay, so Meowth. <laughs> but I call you Moose. I'm going to call you Moose. Whatever. I know he has Moose. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I fucked that entire part up, but it's okay. Uh, and by the way, I'm not editing any of this because I'm lazy. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, people are going to like this. All right, so... Um, let let me start off with a, a personal my personal view on religion uh, in real life. So I'm I'm not very religious. I grew up in a religious household when I was younger. Uh, I no longer practice religion. I'm more of a religious person. Not religious. Oh my god! Fuck! Fuck that up too. I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. Um, but I do believe that our choices that we carry with us. And experiences that we carry with us in real life also reflect the choices we make in video games sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't um, some people can make that disconnect and just like be a completely evil character whatever um, what are your thoughts about that um, so I also grew up in a pretty religious household but I myself am no longer religious um, it was actually kind of one thing that was a little bit of contention between my family and me over the years. We're all good now. Um, and I remember really kind of deciding that I didn't know what I was supposed to believe. I didn't know if there was a higher power or anything like that. And I found myself, and this sounds really bad, but I just didn't really care. And I still feel like I'm in that period mm -hmm. of where I... I don't know if there is or not, and if you like try to harp on me or figure out what I believe, I don't know. Um, and so that's kind of where I am. And in terms of video games, though, I really feel like a religion or having multiple religions or deities or the pantheon as they're intending to go with, it is incredibly important because it allows certain avenues into the setting. I, I, yeah, I agree with that. Um... And no one's going to give you flack. <laughs> if you do, then you're in the wrong place. It's the wrong video for you. <laughs> Change the channel. Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to dive into Ashes of Creation's uh, religious systems. So we know that corruption is going to be, a, is going to be really hard for people to um, get rid of. One of the main ways to do so is to die. So, yeah. And then the other, the other, the other way that um, you'll be able to um, cleanse yourself of corruption is to is by joining a religious order and uh, sort of uh, worshiping these these deities and their followings through. And um, ah, I can't talk. Sorry. And they're um, going to shrines and temples and cleansing yourself that way. How do you feel about that system? So the corruption system is something that a lot of people have really tried to speculate about how it's going to work and the ins and outs of it. Because we know the base structure. But one thing that they have said is that the corruption system, first and foremost, is supposed to be an anti-griefing mechanism without mm -hmm. just saying you can't kill non-combatants. Right. Um, and so if we come at it from that perspective of it's already a mechanic that isn't it's just there as a preventative measure there has to be a lot more trade-off in my opinion 
for following a religious order just to reduce your corruption. Because the trade-off, al the alternative to that would be to die and potentially lose, um, if you, uh, get the experience debt or lose, um, you know, items that you're carrying around or gatherables or what have you. Um, so in my opinion, if you did use religion, you join a religious uh, group in order to lower your corruption, there should be some sort of time, um, not necessarily limit, but something that's keeping you from just using that system to lower your corruption back to the where you're not corrupt and then going out immediately and doing it again. Like maybe if they have a reputation table or something right. of that rare, like type of system, every time that you re-corrupt yourself, you actually lose reputation with this group because I feel like it could be abused in that way. And knowing uh, Steven and the whole team, they always try to look at things as how would an MMO player break this? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that they'll see that potential abuse. And I think there was a, uh, from what I read from the wiki, uh, and again, this is not 100% confirmed, but um, the, the religious quest for people who want to use that route to cleanse themselves of corruption will not be an easy task. Um, they want the quest to be meaningful, but also take a long time to complete, uh, to kind of, you know, uh, sway people from being corrupt in the first place. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I have on that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. So, uh, religion... A religious uh, aspect of the in the game or in video games, uh, do you believe it's going to add um, some sort of? Okay, let me rephrase that. Ugh. So, religion and acts of creation. Do you think it's a necessary system? Um, I wouldn't say it's necessary, but from my point of view, where I've made a few different settings, homebrew settings for tabletop games, and I've played through. A decent chunk of MMOs, MMOs, <laughs> of MMOs. Huh, I never I'd played say, one of those. <laughs> I'd say that religion actually plays a really important part, like I said, in creating more depth to a setting. Right. Um, so, in terms of being necessary, I'd say not, not really. But I think that if you have the time and you're willing to go through it, as they seem to be, it is much more beneficial to have it than to not because it gives you the avenues of um, having the BBEG or the big bad evil guy mm -hmm. um, maybe they're motivated through religion or maybe one in, one of the gods or deities in the pantheon has become corrupt if you like look down the the Warcraft mythos that's kind of how they went was you know Sargeras the big bad guy who was one of their pantheon so to speak mm -hmm. uh, became corrupt or it could give you avenues to help combat um, corruption, whatever that is, it may, whether that is the actual corruption mechanic, or if it's simply the, as you know, we say in the role-playing community, the fluff of the magic becoming more intrusive into society. Um, it just, it helps facilitate more character development, not only for your character, but for the world itself, and then all of the NPCs that are in it. Right. I'm not very familiar with um, any other video games uh, religious systems, so this will kind of be like my first uh, real one. Other, other than uh, like Elder Scrolls, you know, their pantheon. <laughs> right. Um, so another interesting aspect will be that shrines and temples will be able to be put uh, in freeholds. And players will be able to exchange currency to use those freeholds to other players. Um, so this will, you know, create another aspect of commerce for that node and for maybe guilds of a certain religious um, sect. Um, so what are your, what do you think, and what are your views about um, this system and maybe ways to further it or improve? How do you feel about that? I think it's a great idea, especially in envisioning freeholds as I have been, where they we know that they are tangible places in the world, So, and they could be as far as the zone of influence of the node that they are parented by. 
Um, which means that you could be out in the quote-unquote wilderness and you happen upon a temple to you know some some deity not quite sure and you could stop by or you know you pay your respects and that adds and that freehold had to have been put there by another player but to this player in the wilderness it adds that more feel of realism and that this religion isn't something that you just see in the quest text that you try to skip over right. it's a very tangible thing to the point where another player actually put this here for a reason and maybe you'll investigate into that um and as well with the uh, extra mechanics that could go into it it's always neat whenever there are places that are not in a city because i always think of subterfuge like the, the tavern that's on the road in the woods or something right. like that there's always some sneaky business going on there well <laughs> This, this massive temple uh, that's in the middle of a desert, how do they get funded? <laughs> Who's funding that? You know, what, is there some sneaky business happening there? Uh, it, there's always that, like, it's uh, you use it as a conduit for more story through the players that Intrepid doesn't even necessarily have to write. Right. And there, <laughs> I wanted to say something when you were speaking. Uh, oh, sorry. There's always something <laughs> sneaky happening. Uh, with MMO players. Um, so this will add that uh, element of, uh, I guess, uh, underground, the mystery, you know, the mystery right. element. Um, but yeah, the, it's going to be very interesting to see how the the player base takes these, um, these shrines and sort of turns them into, uh, like, <laughs> what's the term I want to use? Like, um, I don't sure. know, like like corner stores or something, like a pl quick place for people to go to get a blessing, and then you know, like go right. go along their merry way. Um, and the blessing could yeah. be, uh, as you were saying, like extra mechanics to it. Yeah, maybe the the blessing is as powerful as this deity um, has been noticed by like the PCs throughout the entire world of Vera. So maybe there, this isn't the only temple in, you know, out of this 10,000 population realm, 1,500, which is probably a pretty big percentage, right. um, specifically pray to this deity every single day, that probably is going to have a bigger impact on whatever you get from it, as opposed to one that maybe only 10. Right. It it kind of reminds me of the mechanics in, um, do, you, do you play um, Civilization? I do. Oh, yay. <laughs> okay, so one of my big things when I'm playing is I always... Okay, so I always build my city, my population first, so with food, and then mm. I build my religion. Uh, so that way, there's always... Um, there's already that secondary... Uh, uh, secondary like ah, I can't even speak ah. anyway so yeah I build food and then I build religion so that way uh, my influence grows faster um, through through the different um, segments or blessings or buffs or whatever you want to call them that the game gives you right through the belief path. right so um, in turn my religion will uh, spread 30% uh, further from each city that i have and i'm still like maybe in the medieval era and but yet my 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 religious pressure is way more than this huge advanced civilization um yeah it always feels great whenever yeah. your religious pressure on an enemy holy city is more than they can produce yeah yeah it, it definitely is and that's how i usually play is like um I don't use uh, war tactics. I always try mm. to win through uh, econ econ uh, through my uh, economy or through my uh, religious influence uh, type of victory. I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. The cultural um, influence. Yeah, the cultural one. influence. Whew, whew, okay. Uh, but yeah, um, I could see that uh, being utilized with... Um, a huge religious order of players or guilds, um, you know, just um, spreading their uh, their influence through the wilderness of Vera. Right, and maybe the more powerful ones start to stir up 
not necessarily um, rivalries from PCs, although that could happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be, P it could be, um, you know, corrupt beings that are contrary. Like maybe it's a god of order, and then these chaos beings start to spawn up to try to combat it. Or um, it could be PCs where you feel like your religion is losing pressure, so you go and siege this node specifically to knock off this freehold. Um, so yeah, it definitely adds a lot more player agency which they have been you know preaching Definitely. from the beginning not to make a pun <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one um, uh, um how do you feel about religion influencing uh political aspects in the game like um, um sorry so say we have a um a metropolis and within this metropolis there are uh three let's say let's just Let's just um, spitball. There's like three major religions in this uh, metropolis, uh, and each uh, each bleh, each order of players is trying to convert as many people as possible. Maybe there's a quest. Maybe you know there's something tagged onto doing so. Um, just just give me some scenarios of of how you feel this would play out within politics or just alliances and other systems so we know that there's going to be a religious type of node so to just kind of give a scenario like maybe the um head node or the metropolis in the region mm -hmm. is um economic but the there's two nodes that are pretty close that are religious or we'll use three since that was the one you had in your example right, right. <laughs> there's the yeah, there's three nodes that are within its zone of influence that are religious, and maybe um, for the economic one, they actually have a vote. I'm I'm not sure exactly how it will work, but in this scenario, let's say they do. Well, then you're incentivized to almost like bribe or donate more than you normally would to the church that you want to succeed. Um, so if you're like the reigning political elite and you realize that you need this extra vote from the religious group, you're essentially choosing which religion you want to make right. the main one in your uh, zone of influence. And that could have all sorts of ramifications, like maybe uh, a rival metropolis has an opposite one, or if they have the same one, maybe if you both choose the same thing, that religious pressure will become more than you can actually control. Um, so just in that regard, you're immediately having to make decisions of whether or not you want to back certain religions. And then it becomes less of, oh, my group of political elites believe this religion and more so we need it. And right. then they gain power for a reason you didn't intend. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm excited. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like just listening to you explain all that, just oh, like, I'm ready. Like my body's ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to um, deities. So in the AOC wiki, uh, there are only two types of examples of deities that Stephen mentioned, and it was a creator god and a goddess of love. Um, if you had a choice to feature a god, what god would you would you want in the game, and why? Um, are you asking which god I would want in the game? Is in one I could follow, or like um, you could follow, or just one you want to see in general, like um, a god of war, like you know, just something. Oh, outside of those two. Yeah, outside of those two. Yeah. Um, even though I'm never a necromancer, uh -oh. <laughs> and this isn't like something that I, I, I really ever play that motif. But a god of death is so important, especially if you have a god of creation. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be, um, you know, the typical raise things from the dead. It could just be a cycle of things get created and then they become destroyed so that they can create new life. Um, I have a good friend who I actually do most of my campaigns with. Uh, his name is Adam. Shout out to Adam. Hi, Adam. <laughs> and, uh, he is always so gung-ho. Every time we do a setting, he's like, what's the god list? What's the god list? <laughs> and... So I've had to make a few, and then when we were playing in Vera, um, we were really trying at first to stay as close to 
um, the line to play verbatim what we had been given from Intrepid. Right. But the more we got into it, we realized there were just too many holes in the lore. So that's why I say we play Vera adjacent. <laughs> um, and he immediately was like, where's the god list after we had decided to kind of go off the rails a little mm -hmm. bit? And there's something so powerful about a god of death because they can be the villain when you need them to be. But in, in the way that I see it, and uh, the one he references is from Discworld, if anyone has read that, um, there can... Uh, they, the God of Death can be the villain when you need it to be, but at the end of the day, it's a necessity for them to have their power. Because if there is no decay and there is no death, whether it be human, plant, um, decay of knowledge, uh, then there's no incentive or reason for the world to continue prospering. The, I think it's like when, um, when you feel like you can't invent anymore, mm -hmm. you, you stop. And I, there's a better quote for it. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's like complacency is like the e the enemy of innovation. And without death, the populace would become complacent. And so I really hope that Intrepid does, if they do a God of Death, which they should. <laughs> I'm pretty, I am almost 100% sure there will be. Yeah. One, yeah. Then I hope that they write it in the way where it's not just explicitly evil. Because um, there's so much you can do with the God of Death. No, no, my, <laughs> like my choice sucks after that. <laughs> no, um, I always gravitate towards um, wholesome types of deities. Like in okay, so for example, like in Elder Scrolls or even Elder Scrolls Online, my player character is uh, a healer, so I always gravitate towards the holy god or the good one so i always go to a god who is a, like a goddess of love or a creator god right. or a god of mercy or something um and i'm pretty sure there's going to be one of those in this game um that brings me to a, another question i have is when Steven mentioned that the gods had a war and it, they became fractured, there is a possibility that there will be good gods, evil gods, and perhaps neutral ones. Um, so, what do you think the influence... Uh, okay, let me, let me rephrase that. Who do you think influence the creation of the portals or the gateways hmm that's actually a, a really interesting question and it's hard to give a definitive answer because we don't know <laughs> right, all of right. the the gods but i'd imagine um it would be a god that cares possibly about life it could just be a god of creation or a god of love in that regard or it could just be a god of balance um, or it could be the god of magic. It's it's hard to say if the motivations were to help preserve the humanoid species on Vera and right. like get them off so that they can fix everything. Or it could have been in a more like sinister sense. It's the god of magic who is trying to take over the world during the calamity, and they're like, maybe I won't be able to if these people are still around. I'll open up these portals to get them to go away. And right. then that kind of opens up the potential of us coming back. Maybe they're like, oh, crap. <laughs> now I got to do something about it again. Um, so if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably going to be the god of whoever governs the life on Vera. Whoever has the people's, quote unquote, best interest at heart. Right. That brings me to something that... Um... Uh, a friend of mine brought up the other day was did the gods influence leave with the inhabitants and when our ancestors came to the new world the you know the one they escaped to um, did they bring their pantheon their beliefs with them or were those just kind of forgotten um, and also Returning back to Vera, the forgotten races that were stuck here, um, 
do they continue to worship the old old gods or have they evolved and maybe perhaps ascended themselves so one your friend has a really imaginative mind (laughs) (laughs) um Two, uh, one thing that we uh, did in our version in Vera Jason right. uh, was that when they went back to this other world, and it does have a name, but it's escaping me at this moment. Because um, <laughs> I, I know Stephen has said it at one point. Um, so when they went back to this other world, people and as, as a culture of just the human instinct in general is in times of desperation to look for more help instead of always to deny that help is out there Mm. so i think that even when magic seems to have left the people who left vera they've gone to this world where you can't really use the same magical capabilities that you had on vera i think people would more so turn to those gods and maybe depends on how tangible the gods were when they were on vera maybe they weren't listening to their cries so there could be a group of people who have become jaded and they've made their own Um, religions on the the new world and now that they're coming back to vera they may feel uh uh insufficient or you know emasculated and be like oh well now these gods that we had felt like protected us for how many hundreds of years now that we're coming back to a place um, where we turned our back on these other pantheon what are the ramifications going to be for us um and for the species that maybe stayed on vera uh, I have, I, I wrote like a little short story that I only shared with my players, and it's about a group of species that endured after the calamity. Mm-hmm. And the way that I viewed it is I'm sure that many groups of people will have turned their back and been like, I cried out to you, you did nothing. Um, I tried to get through the portals that I believe that you made. You wouldn't let me go. Like just slide it at each turn, and then they may have become this, you know, uh, cliche will kill all life kind of monsters right. um, but there has to be some groups of people who have survived and maybe they attribute that to certain deities maybe they you know because even and i this may cause like some issue i don't know if you want to edit it or not come on, but like come on. <laughs> there <laughs> in right. my opinion there's been no definitive proof of any god in our world, but people still believe because they see small things or they see maybe big for them as it being evidence of God's existence or whatever um, the religion may see as their you know, head or creator. Right. So in Vera, if you're living day by day and you, you pray every day to the God of love, say, I I love my child with all my heart, please let us live one more day, and you keep living that one more day, that could cause such a great connection to whatever you view as your deity or your reason for actually making it through the hellhole that I'm sure Vera must be before we've come back to it. Wow. You you bring up some really, really good points. And... um... Yeah, like my head is spinning right now. Like, <laughs> I ramble. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You're you're fine. You're fine. Like it, it's a lot to think about because, again, there's a lot a lot of information that we don't have, and so it's up to the players to kind of fill in those holes. And again, like with um, with storytelling, each story is different. So you're telling of your your perspective will be completely different from when I tell someone mine. So it it's it's amazing to me how one one tiny subject of faith or religion will will like you know just impact everyone. Right. Um, so I want to touch on something that you mentioned um, about he about. Um, not being any not not you know having any proof of of a right. soul called all seeing god or gods so in ashes of creation how do you think they will handle atheism so there you know there are those people who only want to solo 
play and people who don't want to be involved with every single system in a game. Right. I am very curious to to kind of see how this will affect people who are obsessed with min maxing their characters um, if they choose to not partake in this system. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So, just as it's human nature for uh, you to look for higher power reason that things happen, that doesn't mean that that's always true. I mean, you and I are both kind of proof that we don't necessarily believe in a higher power, and there's a lot of people like that. And in theory, there will be a lot of people or characters like that in a game like Ashes of Creation. Um, you bring up a good point in that min-maxers will normally try to do whatever they can so once the game has been slightly fleshed out and you see that maybe the um, god of chaos makes it so that you crit more often right. and you're playing a class that really relies on crit so you do the entire you know quest line to mm -hmm. make sure you have that crit buff and the person who doesn't want to play in any religion is just kind of sitting over there like oh well, you know <laughs> I, I didn't get my yeah i didn't get my buff because i didn't do that so they definitely they don't have to but i think to your point they should make there still be some reason or not necessarily reason but a benefit an incentive, incentive yeah to not going through that apart from i mean the way i see it is if if it is alt friendly i'll probably want to have played through all of the different storylines of religion or you know just the base storylines of the game depending right. on how your road goes regardless but they definitely need to make sure they do a good balancing act, like you said, on making it so min-maxers don't feel completely compelled to play a religion that they feel like their character wouldn't necessarily go with. I am... I'm very uh, concerned with this, because if it could potentially go the way of other MMOs where you have this huge rating guild who require players to have certain buffs, certain gear sets, or certain, you know, roles that they need to fill. And, um, you know, this person doesn't want to go and follow God of Death or the Goddess of Love or whoever it is because they they don't feel like, like they would need to right so then in, in in turn that group that rating group would find someone else who is willing to do that um so, so oh go ahead no, 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 you, you can go <laughs> so just a few things on that right. um i hope that the buffs for one either aren't active if if they are big enough that it would make a very large difference to where a raid would tell you you can't be with them if they you don't have that buff, right. either they aren't active in the raid, period, or they're small enough to where if they're kicking you out for that, that's their problem, not yours. Um, and shout out to Sons of the Seven, because um, our my assumption is that Telkar is planning on having like an elite raid group um, as well as uh, you know, a raid group that maybe is more doing it so for the story or for the fun of it, as opposed to being wanting to be like server first or anything like that. And that's a great idea from his uh, from his point. Right. And I, so if if you're going into it and you're wanting to be like min maxi elite as the best of the best, this two percent extra crit on your character <laughs> is going to make or break you. You most likely, and not for everyone don't care as much about right. the backstory so that'd be my only counter argument to that and i hope that a i hope that a guild wouldn't kick you out just because you decided to follow the god of love instead of the god of death right and uh right right, right. so that yeah that, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's my kind of like my point like um because i've seen it time and time and time again in different games where you know, uh, again, people don't have certain stats or certain something and they get kicked from a raid group or even yeah. from like a, a random pug. Like, oh, let me let me um, inspect you. Oh, you don't have this. OK, peace out, you know. Um, and again, back to the Sons of the Seven. Holla. 
um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I will be forming raid groups where I just kick everyone because I hate all of you. <laughs> um, just to troll you at the very end and kick everyone, take your loot. Um, so don't join, don't join any of my raid groups. <laughs> yeah, so you would be like, oh, you didn't do the God of Love? And you're like, all it does is give you like a little heart that pops above your head. It's not great for you. Like, yeah, get out. <laughs> uh, that'd be so awesome. No, um, but for real, um, I do like I do like your counter argument is, you know, if people are that petty to kick someone for having, you know, 0.1% or 2% of a stat that with gear and with uh, character progression and so on and so forth will not even matter, then, you know, maybe you should find a different group to yeah. raid with or to quest with. Um, yeah. So, if you had a religion to join out of the six that we know nothing of, <laughs> right, um, right. what type of religion would you like to join if, if you had the choice? In most games, I typically play, and I, I had such a hard time with this when I was doing a, the podcast with the Ash and Herald because I've played or made a lot of characters that I've either played as a, as a DM or that I played in MMOs, and I have like two archetypes that I typically like to go with, and one is my go lucky cooking loves history uh, dwarf who's a little bit gullible because you know mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a dwarf. And then the other one is uh, one that's more grounded and loves preserving nature. And I feel like that one's more like me. I mean, I am go lucky, but I don't think I'm a dwarf. Um, uh, so I'd, I'd probably go with one that maybe likes balance in life. Um, possibly the god that tried or the deity that tried to save um, the humanoid races. So if I had to choose, I'd say I'd go with that one. Awesome. I don't I have no idea what I would what I would want to follow. Um I'm kind of my mood flip-flops. Mm -hmm. So one day I want to be um a follower of, you know, the goddess of boobs or whatever. And like <laughs> the next day, you know, like I just want to be, you know, murdering everything. Take, you know, goddess the god of death, you know, maybe he gives me some type of uh um uh, leeching type of magic and i just like suck everybody's yeah. life out you know that <laughs> well that would be kind of cool too i mean i don't think that they would do this because it sounds like a lot of work but maybe uh you are a healer or um, a cleric and uh you are following you know the god of light mm -hmm. or whatever and your your healing spells they look all nice and you know the the typical white or yellow and then you're like, no, my, my character had a change of heart. You go and follow the, the god of death, and uh, your magic becomes a little bit more dark, but it still heals, and maybe people are like, oh, this feels a little different. Right. Okay, <laughs> that would be kind of cool. I'm glad you brought that up, because um, I had been working... Okay, this is, this is kind of like off the subject, but I had been working on a video uh, about magic, about... Um, just all types of magic that we want to see in game and such on and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, and one of the types of magic um, systems was the flair of religion and um, uh, divine, divine power, um, you know, because each God pretty much is, is, you know, each God is different. So like right. you said, say you're following the God of death and they give you a flair to your healing or to your DPS. Whereas a a god of uh, light will give you like like you said um, these these magic uh, <laughs> I can't talk <laughs> um, different flares to your magic abilities right so um, yeah that would be really cool it would be really really cool to see um, but like you looking you out for that it'd video probably be a little bit too much work for them to do. Um, since they have a lot on their plate at the moment, I think that probably yeah. like something maybe along along after release or something. It'd be a kind of cool expansion. I mean, hey, yeah, it would. Yeah, maybe <laughs> the first uh, BBEG is you know more mundane or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the next expansion is more diving into the gods. That'd be kind of cool. 
that would be really awesome and uh it bring it it kind of okay so to continue my thought because if i don't get this out then i'm gonna just like i'm sorry be over here like oh. um so each god depending on the player character um will be seen differently so say i am an, I, I play evil, evil characters so i gravitated towards the god of death i don't see that like, like you said the, the death god isn't necessarily an evil god mm -hmm. it's an character um that you can play as and it's not like would see this sort of power or abilities that this god gives me not as evil but um i i lost what i was saying <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> you're good i'll figure it out later um anyway so let's let's keep this rolling all right so i read an article recently uh while i was researching religion in society and different cultures um i came across this one article that said gaming could be viewed as a religion um and they quote a lot of the fervent love for games and how that can sometimes be expressed makes sense. Games aren't just a hobby for many people. They are also an identity which can inform a lot of your lifestyle and values like religion does. How do you respond to this and do you agree with any of this? Um, I mean, it's hard to say. The definition of religion is can probably be defined differently by a lot of people. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I agree. Maybe an addiction? <laughs> um, <laughs> I play a lot of video games, and I'd say that a lot of times how I view things probably does uh, get changed by my experiences. But I feel like that's true for almost anything anyone does. Um, right. I think that most of the the ways that I get shaped are through the people that I meet through playing video games. Um, so I don't know if I'd necessarily agree, but I definitely would say that a big part of my identity is being a gamer. Definitely. All right. So one last, one last thing I want to ask about religion, your thoughts um, <clears throat> would be about the few people who don't want to follow the official pantheon their official religions presented to them so in turn they they form their own factions of religion player-made religions mm -hmm. um cl uh, cults or you know right. uh, fanatics <laughs> um how how do you how would you want to see this play out or would you want this to be played out in the game? Well, I love a good cult in a setting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I definitely think that they should have a way for players to feel like they have that agency to make not necessarily a tangible religion and that everyone on the server is able to see it, but maybe... Um, the ability to make nondescript religious buildings. They don't necessarily have to be of Akatosh or, you know, whatever right. from Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Um, or it could be an extra content that they release periodically, maybe uh, player actions on a server, or maybe it could just be game wide. Uh, they, a new group of individuals have started to call themselves a cult with the sole purpose of, um, you know, bringing back. Uh, a lieutenant of the dead or something like that and they give players an opportunity to be behind this it's really difficult to give a lot of player agency for a religion in an mmo like that uh, because when you don't have the structure of giving it a tangible name it's hard for people to know what it is where it is what it's about and the problem with giving in the players the ability to make a tangible name of anything is abuse and i'm sure intrepid doesn't want to have to be policing every religious name that people try to make <laughs> yeah that would be a pain in the ass yeah <laughs> all right so that's all i have for today uh <clears throat> i'm gonna end this segment um with my final thoughts and my spiel, I guess you can say. <laughs> so as we are questing through the world of Vera, it is quite possible that these gods will try to influence us or to sway us, sway us to their side. Uh, they might whisper in our ear. You might hear a faint voice on the wind. 
or an eerie feeling that you're being watched. Oh my God. <laughs> Safe to say that developers are putting a lot of thought and detail into the religious aspect of the game. Uh, we have yet to get a lot of information from them uh, as they want us to discover this for ourselves. Whether or not players decide to become religious or not, that is entirely their business. So I want to thank everyone for joining me for this discussion. Please remember everything that we say in this video is our own personal views. Um, we're not trying to bash anyone's uh, religious views or, or anything like that. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, I'd like to thank my special guest, Moose or Meow. <laughs> um, for those who are interested in finding your work, where can they go? Um, so if you want to talk to me, I am on Discord. I'm on the official Ashes of Creation Discord as Moosni, as well as the Ashes of Creation role-playing Discord. You can also find me in the Sons of the Seven Discord. If you have any questions or anything, you can find me there. Um, I have a few, or I have one short story as well as a few tidbits that I have put up on the Ashes of Creation forums under Moosni. It's either Moosni or Moosni10, I can't remember at this moment. But yep, if you have any questions, just hit me up. Google is your best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I want to thank everybody who has been listening or watching. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye. Where's, oh my God. Ah, okay, stop. <laughs>